So that's frequency modulation of oscillator one. Let's talk about pulse width modulation of oscillator one. Okay, we're gonna switch this over to pulse so we can hear the width being modulated. Here is manual. Oh, something crazy's going on. Oh, that's what it is. Here is manual. Okay, we also have the ability to direct envelope generator one to the pulse width. You can hear the pulse width changing as the attack and uh, decay and release occur. And of course, changing the pulse width of the starting waveform makes a difference. So you have your wave shape changing over time. So that's a nice effect, very traditional. Also, your external uh, input can affect your pulse width. Again, we have a sample and hold shape uh, with a slew rate on it to give it a little bit of, uh, uh, I don't know, to break up its rigidity. So that's cool. Of course, you can use LFO. It's a nice sound. And of course, speeding it up uh, will affect the pitch of oscillator one. Anyway, that is essentially your LFO. You have the ability to uh, employ that. And of course, you don't see me doing this yet because we're not really talking about the LFO, but I probably should be doing it. Uh, this LFO has its own sample and hold that you could be using. Because there are multiple waveforms here. And certainly you could have used like uh, LFO's uh, sample and hold to affect the pitch when we were talking about that. What a square wave. Um, or even CV2. Uh, which actually happens on the back. So you can have a CV input that is affecting that in whatever way that you want. But all of these different wave shapes available in the LFO can be used to affect uh, the pulse width. Let me remind you that you're dealing with an LFO that is an analog LFO. These days, so many of the analog synthesizers being released only have an analog signal path, which is to say the output from the oscillators follows an analog signal path and the uh, filter is an analog filter and then it goes out and that's it. Whereas uh, the envelopes in LFO are actually digital. And a lot of people say, well, who cares about modulation? I mean, that doesn't have to, you know, that doesn't have to do with tone. Uh, but it does have to do with authentic vintage analog sound because all of those synthesizers had analog LFOs and analog envelopes. 
And that's what we're dealing with on this synthesizer too. We're talking about a totally analog LFO. So it's an oscillator that is an analog oscillator just moving very slowly. So you're going to get some, uh, the effect of its analog nature is going to be apparent in the sound of the oscillators. But yeah, the pulse width modulation on this thing sounds really great. And of course, you can use VCO2 to modulate the pulse width. So that's an audio range oscillator uh, affecting the pulse width. And if you start modulating it, you'll get uh, more than just that crazy distortion. you can get some really weird noises with experimentation. Analog Solutions wants to give you crazy modulation options and they always do. So yeah, the fact that you can uh, modulate the pulse width with uh, VCO is just absolutely fantastic. So that's oscillator one. And oscillator two is very similar. So we're just gonna run through it real quick here. Oh, we're still modulating, okay. Um, I have it an octave higher than oscillator one right now. Actually not an octave. Oscillator 2 has a wide and free setting that you can see I have it on. And this I absolutely love. I think it's absolutely wonderful for modulation of anything by an oscillator to be able to have that oscillator set to pretty much anywhere in the range of audible frequency. Yep. You can get way up there. So pretty much the range of audible frequency exists in this oscillator. So you can play it with a theremin, as a theremin by playing this knob. You can just choose the notes. I'm going to do Mary Had a Little Lamb. Okay, so that was terrible and you'll probably never do that, but you could if you wanted to. Hey, let's find the right pitch again. But you have a lot of opportunities to make really cool sounds when you have that pitch range available in a single knob. I love that. And of course, just like over here in oscillator one. Now someone might be saying, oh, you just had to adjust that range. And it's true, but you have to do that on a mini Moog as well. That's the thing. You can't have perfection in great analog tone all at once. So just deal with it, people. No, um, I'm not making excuses for the synthesizer. It's fantastic. And that is just part of the deal when you really want analog tone. <laughs> And of course, this synthes this oscillator has um, a square wave too. Um, it's pretty much the same oscillator. And again, you have the same functions as you do in oscillator two as far as modulation, except that instead of having uh, oscillator two as a modulation source, you have oscillator one. And whatever is happening to oscillator one, for example, our crazy external sample and hold, slew covered sample and hold. So just right there, we had a perfectly normal oscillator. We just turned this knob to the left and all of a sudden we have crazy robot lovemaking or whatever that is. And of course you could have a uh, modulated oscillator one with uh, the Nyborg's own sample and hold. 
<laughs> You're only a knob turn away from insanity with a synthesizer at any given point. But yeah, so you have the ability to modulate oscillator one, uh, modulate oscillator two with the output of o oscillator one. <laughs> And then you can always bring oscillator one in and uh, make it even crazier. That's oscillator one and two modulating each other. Also, you'll note. Ooh, God, that was cool. You'll notice that on oscillator two, envelope generator two, which is largely directed towards the amp, is also controlling the frequency. So each of them has their own individual envelopes. If you want to disable envelope two controlling the VCA and just switch it to gate or whatever, you can have then two os two envelopes to control each oscillator's frequency or pulse width. Uh, independently. The options are incredible and See, that's the point where with a synthesizer, you're not screwing around. This is a serious synthesis-based synthesizer, not just a thing that plays synthesizer sounds. So by integrating these two modulation functionalities, you can create some really intense um, sounds, uh, drum sounds, effects, etc. So you don't have to be like me and just do all kinds of, uh, you know, Captain and Tennille uh, solos or whatever. <laughs> you can do some really hardcore analog frequency modulation with this and not be joking around. Okay. Um, we also want to talk about, while we're talking about this, we might as well just stick with the audio mixer. This is going to be a long video, maybe two videos. Anyway, you have... A sub oscillator possibility. And what do you notice right away about this sub oscillator? It has the traditional square wave sound. And this is oscillator one uh, divided down. So you're basically talking about oscillator one and what you do to oscillator one is going to have an effect on this sub uh, oscillator. <laughs> So you can use this. This is like another square wave that you can have. Um, however, the width is not going to have an effect because it's just a, a divide down square wave. So um, you have another oscillator sound to mess with if you just want to mix and match the sub oscillator and oscillator two. Right now they're set to the same pitch. And uh, so you can change oscillator uh, two's pitch to whatever, whether you want it to be in unison with the sub output or whether you want it to be a higher octave or a fifth. You have a lot of great timbral opportunity. Plus some serious analog depth. Listen to that. Not messing around here, people. Okay. And also when you're designing your uh, drum sounds, you have uh, an analog noise source. which is really fun when we get into the filter and et cetera. But that is kind of the oscillators, uh, kind of the, well, the oscillators totally. <laughs> and then, well, no, 
no, not totally. Okay, so that's kind of the oscillators, kind of the LFO, kind of most of the audio mixer. Uh, we're still gonna talk about the LFO again when we talk about other functions, and there's gonna be a video 